This is Twit. August 12 was the beginning of the add-in board partner launch. I think that was the first day. Mm -hmm. So this was a, an early card that was sent out a couple days in advance to press. And we were one of the outlets that got a chance to look at it. And it's kind of your average aftermarket dual fan card. I mean, this is the, right. the Pulse series is kind of their budget minded series. And then Sapphire has Nitro cards for their higher performance, a uh, little bit better cooling, higher overclocks out of the box. This is a slight factory overclock. The review ended up being, well, absolutely, it was a showcase for what you can do with a much better cooler with these RX 5700 series cards. And they released this in a mm -hmm. 5700 and a 5700 XT. It became almost all about low noise compared to AMD's reference cooler because at least in my case, the performance of this aftermarket cooler or aftermarket uh, card was actually slightly lower than my reference card. And after doing a whole bunch of extra testing uh, way into the middle of the night before the launch, when I discovered this, when I was making my charts, I realized that my press sample of the 5700 XT with the reference design, the blower cooler, is clocked a little bit high. So really, I have a I have a permanent overclock baked into that card that I wasn't aware of because that was the only card I'd ever had. And I had you have to monitor frequencies and actually look. And even though Sapphire was putting about a 65 or 70 megahertz overclock on this, because AMD's actual stock card, uh, they have three different clocks, and there's actually a fourth clock just to make it extra easy to comprehend. <laughs> There's there's the base clock, which is not actually the base clock. It's the clock that if you back the GPU into the into a corner with fur mark or something, it's the the right. lowest boost speed, basically. And that's sixteen hundred and five megahertz on the reference card, I believe. Or at least that's what they claim. And then the game clock should be about seventeen fifty. And then the peak clock should be somewhere around twenty one hundred megahertz. If it can hit that, and that's like short bursts. Looking at GPU-Z with both of these cards, the reference card and the Sapphire card, I was seeing that the Sapphire card was actually idling at 1,419 megahertz, which mm -hmm. uh, looking at the reference BIOS, that should be 1,400. So it's slightly higher. Okay, it's a slightly overclocked card. But my press sample was running at 1,439. And that slight mm. advantage was consistent across the board. It was like 20 or 30 megahertz higher than the Sapphire card at all loads. So I did some quick comparison testing, running a looped benchmark and observing and then charting the the frequencies that I was seeing. And it was peaking higher. It was averaging higher by about that 30 or 40 megahertz, actually. So not the best uh, review when it comes to actually looking at what the Sapphire is capable of versus a true reference design rather than my overperforming card. But it was still <laughs> still very impressive to hear a card that under full load was more than 10 dB lower than the reference card. And it was cooler at the same time. And if you bumped up the clocks, like what Gamers Nexus has done, because they do this, we were talking before the show, I think it was before the show, This their, Gamers Nexus is very popular on YouTube with hardware reviews. Yes. And definitely check out their review because they have the same card. Uh, they do what's called normalized testing, where they they have picked 40 decibels as the number, and they adjust the fan percentage until they hit 40 decibels of noise from, I think it's 20 inches away with their sound meter on an open test bench. And then mm -hmm. they do their thermal testing. So with AMD's reference card, they were targeting around 48 dB, I believe. It's actually kind of capped. Once it reaches like 48 point something db then the clock speeds actually start to drop and it will throttle as needed to maintain that volume output because they were concerned about using a blower design and having it get really really loud right but if you normalize that down to 40 db then you are reducing the cooling efficiency and then if you increase this sapphire card which for me under load was like 38.3 db you're giving it a boost if you put it at 40 dB, you're actually increasing the clock speed from the factory defaults. So uh, Gamers Nexus, for their testing, they show a huge, huge disparity between the two cards because 
they're putting the reference card in a bad position because it's it's uh, spinning a lot slower. And for a blower design, that's death. And then right. with this pulse card, they're actually increasing the clock speeds, so they're enhancing its performance. The numbers that I got were still a couple of degrees cooler for both the edge temp and the hot spot, like the hottest point. They have a bunch of different sensors in this new uh, Navi GPU core. So the very hottest temperature was still a couple of degrees lower, even at only 38 decibels under full load. So if you are okay with 40 dB and want to simulate what Gamers Nexus did, you're going to get even better thermals than that. So it just it's it's great to see an add-in uh, board partner and and see what a vastly better cooler can do. And if you're watching the video, mm -hmm. you're seeing Gamers Nexus, uh, their thermal results with that 40 decibel normalized testing I brought up. And we're talking GPU junction temps from 109.6 with the reference card. That's the hot spot temperature under ex uh, extended load with the cooler running slow to hit the 40 dB still at 109.6 and that's where it started throttling actually because 110 degrees or thereabouts is where they start to throttle and of course after this goes up then amd ended up responding and they basically said 110 is the safe limit for these cards which is pretty impressive that they're they're confident <laughs> they'll run safely at 110 this is seven nanometer uh you know kind of new territory for silicon, but they're they're happy with 110 apparently. But you don't have to settle for that. And there's going to be a lot of other uh, partner designs we're going to see. I know uh, a couple of places posted a review of the Asus Strix card a little bit early. Apparently, I haven't seen the U.S. outlets with that review yet. And then there's I'm sure a bunch of other designs that are coming down the pike. But it's, I mean, as great as the RX 5700 series has been in our uh, testing and, and around the web, it's it's really close. The XT especially is really close to the performance of a Radeon Seven, like within five or six percent sometimes for a card that's four hundred bucks. Really, the only thing that was holding it back, and and I think some people were kind of on the fence about making the purchase was just that blower design. I've I've heard so many negative comments, so much feedback about a blower style cooler in two thousand nineteen. Like people just not really interested in that anymore. They don't want the 48, 50 dB under load. And I, I get it. And clearly, as we're seeing, even with this more budget-minded card from Sapphire, you can get better thermals and lower noise with just a better cooler design. And one last thing before I forget, because this is something that's exclusive to Sapphire, forget the the cooler design. Their, their software application, which I typically ignore the vendor specific software applications because I like MSI Afterburner and I you know there's there's a there's some standards out there for Nvidia cards I always use EVGA's Precision X one sure but uh, the tricks that's T R X T R I X X is the name <laughs> of Sapphire's <laughs> utility and uh, apparently in the past it's been a rather loud uh, visually this uh, utility but. They've toned it way down. It kind of looks like a uh, Windows 10 settings window now. Very flat design. But a very interesting feature is hidden in there. It's called Trix Boost. And it basically simulates uh, and gives you total granular control over a DLSS-like effect where you choose a lower re uh, rendering resolution for your game and then... Huh you point your game at this new resolution you've created. And their example, or my example, because they had said, hey, check out what happens if you just lower the resolution by 10% and then upscale right. it by that same 10%. It's going to have a huge performance boost without any overclocking, and you won't be able to tell the difference with your naked eye. You know, obviously, screenshots will show the difference if you want to zoom in and and point to the edge of something or point to a color, tech like a texture. But if you are are gaming on a 1440p monitor and you lower the internal resolution by 10%, so it ends up with an, an odd resolution that's like 1296 instead of 1440. You point your game at this new 1296p resolution and then let the upscaling take care of the difference. And in fact, if you're using one of the compatible APIs, which 
unfortunately, is not DirectX 11. Uh, that was something that excited some comment when AMD had talked about their new image sharpening technology that's available for Navi cards, but it only works with DX9, DX12, and Vulkan, no DX11, which is, you know, most games. So if you do have a DX12 or Vulkan title, enable this as well, and that will help with the quality of the upscaling. And I, I did this. I, I tested a couple of different games in DirectX 12 mode, Metro Exodus and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And I was seeing, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it went up by about 10 frames per second without touching anything else. And I was staring at the benchmark and trying to identify if anything looked lower resolution to me. I thought I was seeing something in some of the color information, but you really need, you need to basically to do some screenshots to see this. And I thought this was this was great. And this is something that is not an AMD feature. This is a, they do the image sharpening. So you could potentially, like say you buy a, a shiny new 4K monitor and you don't have quite the GPU horsepower to game at 4K at the, the averages that you want. Maybe you can play a game at lower settings at 4K, but if you want to look at it with high graphical settings on a 5700 or 5700 XT, and you want those higher frame rates, then this would be a great way to do that. Because with Radeon image sharpening, you could set the game to a lower resolution. For example, set it to 2560 by 1440, and then have Radeon image sharpening assist the process of upscaling that to fill your 4K native display. Right. But the, that's a big gap. And the idea of maybe just a 10 or 12% uh, disparity between the two and and having a slider to control that and look at the result until you're happy with it, knowing that with every percentage point you're gaining frames per second, it's really interesting. So I would love to see this as like a global setting, something that AMD takes a look at, says, hey, we'd like to offer this. Because you can go the opposite way. You can create virtual super resolutions that are much higher than what your monitor can even produce and then subsequently have it downscale and this was one of the ways that AMD was showing how you could even potentially come close to using the 16 gigabyte frame buffer of the Radeon 7 was basically game at 8K, but downscale it to 4K by the time it hits your monitor with the obvious hit on performance that that entails. Uh, I tried this myself with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, by the way, on high. And Shadow of the Tomb Raider <laughs> at 8K high preset, I think I was getting around one and a half to two frames per second. So that was on a RTX 2080. Like, you know what? This is not a good idea. This is not a good idea. Do not do this. <laughs> this so, is not competitive. <laughs> no, do the opposite though. <laughs> Rendering your game at a slightly lower resolution and then upscaling it looks pretty damn good. So kudos to Sapphire for coming up with this. And it did work. It worked as advertised, so you buy a, a sapphire it. card that's the only way to do this right now <laughs>